Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the Semi Pro Film Show. I am Dalton Barrett. Joining me today is Joshua Clements and Daniel Savage. We got a super special episode for you today because today we are going to be watching the very, very, very famous, famous movie. AM Radio, starring not Cuba Gooding Jr., but his brother, Omar Gooding. So, we'll see you on this episode of Simi Pro. All right, boys. AM radio. Uh, here's what's special about AM radio. AM radio was filmed at the radio station that I used to work at. And so anything in the... It's streaming for free on Peacock, by the way, for those of you listening in America. No one is listening to this podcast. Um, oh, hold on. I got to get... I can't hear Daniel or Josh. Hold on. Got to fix it. Got to fix it, got to fix it. All right, they're back, they're back, they're back. Get your um, shit together, man. <laughs> so it was filmed at the radio station in which I used to work at. So anything in this movie that takes place at the radio station in the movie, I was there for. So basically, um, why, you why are you, responsible uh, for this movie existing. I'm a producer. Why would you admit that? I'm a producer yeah, so, on this movie. So you're the reason that we're going to be suffering tonight. Cool thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I did pick the movie. Also, right, that, and you filmed the movie, and you yeah. starred in it. I directed this movie. My name is Ricky Burchell. <laughs> <sighs> Your name is Omar Gooding. Right, I'm Omar Gooding. I was in this film, um, but yeah. So we're gonna watch AM Radio. Uh, Daniel, what do you what do you expect to happen <laughs> in you, this movie? What do you expect out of AM um, Radio? <laughs> oh god. Whew. Um, I'm expecting not to enjoy it. Um, I'm expecting maybe to enjoy it a little bit if I see a Dalton K. Barrett cameo. Uh, but that's about it. Josh? Uh, I'm expecting myself to reminisce about the times we were watching Daddy's Home 2. Mm, those uh, were good times. Yeah, I spend every day reminiscing those moments. Yeah. And I remember, think remember when uh, when Mel Gibson in Daddy's Home Two said, "I got to go drain the lizard." <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you remember yeah, you remember when great. the little kids in Daddy's Home Two got drunk off of the eggnog yeah. together? Yeah, remember when remember, remember, remember when the little boy uh, kissed his <laughs> stepsister on the mouth? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when uh, uh, they chopped down a tree onto John Lithgow? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember the end of the movie, which was the craziest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life? Was it at the movie theater? You watching when, uh, when and when John Cena John went? Cena. Don't say how. Bing <laughs> chilling. Don't say how you went. Bing chilling. All right. right. So now we're gonna go watch AM radio. <laughs> See you guys in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, and we have just finished AM radio, starring Omar Gooding, the brother of Cuba Gooding Jr. <coughs> Starring Panama Gooding. Starring, yeah, uh, starring me. Tommy Gooding, the brother of Cuba Gooding Jr. Starring literally me. Starring Dalton K. Barrett <laughs> from WGNS. Starring both literally me, Omar Gooding Jr.'s character <laughs> Taz the Maz, and right. me, literally me. He's actually <laughs> right. me. I'm in this as, movie. As a voice in the radio that <laughs> was pushed a, down because your voice wasn't deep enough. <laughs> as, a, as a voice, as a caller, as well as a man standing behind the door. <laughs> right. Uh, so that's the entire reason we decided to watch AM Radio because Dawn was right. there when it but filmed. Thank God we did because this, at least the second <laughs> half of this movie, was so much more enjoyable than <laughs> this, I ever cracked. expected. The second half of this movie is one of the best low budget indie movies I've ever seen. We, yeah, we we went like, without this. a doubt. We went like I mean, yeah, you 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 guys just li the one person listening just heard our our predictions. We all had. Horribly low expectations. Even me, and I was oh, yeah. there when they made it. <laughs> and he was there. Like, Dalton made this movie. <laughs> like it, it. I don't know. It. There's. 
I don't like these lower budget. Well, I love. I, I take that back. I love these <laughs> lower budget indie type movies, just made by some guy wanting to make a film, and, and he, he gets he distribution. Knows more than he does about like yeah, and everything. right. And he right, gets yeah. distribution because it's easy to get distribution these days, and the movie yeah. is horrible. I love those because they're so bad and they're hilarious. Mm -hmm. This one was that, but the second half of this movie not only was written well. Uh, there was at least one good actor in it. Like he, the yep. second half of this movie is one so great cool. actor. Like, I mean, I, I've not seen Omar Gooding in anything, and not that I know of. I may have seen him in some bit part <laughs> on like Spike or something. He, he was in, but dude was well fucking tell, great in this. As far as I can tell, the only like big role he might have had is on a Cuba Gooding show as a mm. reoccurring character. They the, right. so Cuba Gooding Jr. and Omar Gooding had a TV show together. They were mm, both was... they were both main characters in this show, and that was really the only only thing he's been in. The only but... bit of fame there, <laughs> <laughs> right? His only claim to fame, other than doing a movie <laughs> where Dalton used to work. <laughs> but but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We're gonna open the movie. So this movie opens on this this washed up type radio host. He's doing his show. He's playing music. He's a DJ, right? So people call in. And suggest songs, but they also kind of give their life story in the meantime. It's your average, like, Josh, I don't know how this resonates with you, but if you've ever turned on your radio, more as a kid, like if you turned, if you were staying up too late and you turned on your radio, this is the kind of show that was on the air. Like it's yeah. your, like, the, like it's usually hosted by a woman, but they got DJ Taz for it. But it's like the show that comes on at two in the morning and you call in your request to the guy and you request a song to the girl. Like it's that kind of show. Um, which do exist. Like it sounds like it's made up for the show, but it's <laughs> for this movie, but it's really not. And Josh, I'd be curious to hear are those a thing over there, or have you ever turned on your uh, radio at two in the morning? I, I, because I was not a child growing up in war torn England. <laughs> you were not a child growing up. <laughs> I can't say that I ever woke up and thought, gosh, turn on my radio at three AM. <laughs> well, I never uh, woke up and did it. It was more like when I would stay up too late. Yeah. I would I would turn this stuff on because I didn't have a TV or anything in my room. So I would mm. listen to the radio. And this is the kind of stuff that was on. As far as I can tell, this isn't that this isn't really a thing over here. The the closest that I can think of is when, you know, my family's been driving back late at night from somewhere. Like we just we, we got back from the airport or something. It was three AM. We're on the ride back home. And there's music hosts who do this and then they'll eventually they'll have like a tiny moment where they'll go, Hey, I'm DJ Jazzy Jeff. And, and, uh, <laughs> DJ Jazzy <laughs> Jeff? Bro bro had DJ Jazzy <laughs> Jeff doing the doing the radio and he's like, no, hey, that's no crazy. Way. Hey, no way. They, they, they show their names and I can get their little like claim to fame and they can show it to their mom and be like, hey mom, I was on the radio. Uh, but they're not right. like a, a big cultural thing as they it's might not be they're not like a whole persona like like yeah. DJ Taz the Maz. Right. Well no, that, I mean, that is more of a thing over here and that they'll also do the caller thing now dj mm -hmm. taz the Maz gets a lot more callers than would actually <laughs> call into a show like this i know right, that yeah. because i worked at the radio station that this is supposed to be <laughs> and not i don't think that many people called in different people called in ever over the course of the time that i worked there which was and that was that was an <laughs> fm radio station too this is this is in context meant oh, to you, be an am radio correct. Like you the name suggests. So that, that, for, that's because you're not DJ Taz the Man. That's, I mean, that's correct. True. Yeah. So for Did, didn't you see the thing on his wall? He was he was the number one DJ in 2014. All right. That's the number one DJ in the world. <laughs> right. For for context, the station I worked at, which is the station in this movie, uh, it was a it, it was originally an AM station, but it had two FM translators. So it was like it, it had mm. two FM stations where you could catch it. One in a different town a little further north than where I live. So you could catch it on like it, it, it had great reach. Like it was a, it was, it's a pretty big station. Uh, in this movie, it's treated like, like dog crap, like the lowest of the low. You can't get average, any lower. Average Tennessee station. <laughs> you right. can't, you cannot get any lower than working at this radio station. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the entire like opening of this movie is him talking to the people who have willingly called onto a show and he just calls them all idiots and says that they're just, stupid. Yeah, he's insulting gosh. them because they have different music tastes than him. Yeah. One of them's like, one of them's like, yeah, I just kind of, you know, I, I listen 
listen to, to hip hop, whatever's on the radio, and he goes, "You're stupid." <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. And then Wrong. he'll play, and then he'll play Wrong. like the most generic royalty-free smooth jazz yeah. <laughs> that's ever been played on the radio, and that's kind of his show. And his producer, whose name is Tony, Tony, Tony his producer yeah, Tony, Tony Antonio. Is, Mm-hmm. Is very upset in his horrible, horrible Cuban <laughs> accent. He's, he's a very man. He's man. a he's a real Cuban actor. <laughs> he's, he's a very very white man <laughs> who comes on and starts doing like the. And it's not even Cuban. It's like generic low rider from LA. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it sounds it sounds like LA Mexican is what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It, well, he's, he's like, so hey, he's homie. Doing- He's do he's doing A S A. You know, it's me. I'm I'm the Cuban man in this movie. So, <laughs> right. so, and he, there's a there's a line where he specifically says, "I'm Cuban." <laughs> well, so so DJ Taz he insults his listeners on the air, and then he goes to like the lobby, the green room type area to eat his cold pizza, and he's saying, "Man, this pizza's horrible." And Tony's like, "Well, they're a sponsor. They sponsor us, so we put them. We we, we eat their pizza because it's free. Whatever. Our, our our ratings are in the dump." The, the numbers on this station are going down. Radio is dying. Yeah, this one's doing numbers ratio. <laughs> right. And and so uh, Taz the Maz, uh, Omar Gooding Jr., calls him out and says, dude, drop the, uh, drop the act. You're white. And he says, I'm Cuban, <laughs> which we find out later. I mean, no, never mind. Yeah, no, 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 we'll, right. get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. it. We'll get to we'll it. Get to it. Let, it let, let it build. Let it build. <laughs> also, the, the line is, Cut the act essay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut the act essay. You're white. Right. Uh, so Cuba Gooding Jr., he goes back on the air and he keeps doing his thing. People call in. I call in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I call in. Well, no, you, you don't. don't you don't. It. You don't call in. You're like you're like an announcer on. on yeah, the stage that's right. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you there. Right. Come you, on, you, come you on, man. Get you, get it right. You were in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been so long. <laughs> what do you, we, just wa- we just watched it. What do you mean? No, I mean it's been so long since they filmed this. <laughs> I guess. L- right. All right. So let me he let me let me set up some context to this. They rented out our station to film this movie. Um. I was there because somebody from the station had to be there to make sure they didn't mess anything up and to let them in and all of those things. So mm-hmm. I was there. Uh, one dude on the set cooked some incredible food. It was delicious. Um, <laughs> I met like old pizza. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, like like I'm talking. This man was making breakfast casseroles and I was eating them at like 1:30 in the morning. This movie was filmed about a a couple weeks. After the the George Floyd murder, I remember because there were riots going on like in Murfreesboro at the time that this was filmed. So it was very, very closely after George Floyd was murdered. Uh, So all of this stuff was going on. Uh, I remember Omar Gooding. He was I mean, he came in. Me and him actually had a conversation about that specifically, like whatever. So it was it was that was super interesting. Uh, Omar Gooding was the nicest guy you'll ever meet ever. Like he was so, so kind. Um, Tony, whoever the actor who plays Tony is was the worst (laughs) man I've ever met ever. (laughs) Like he was such a jerk all the time about everything. So they're filming this movie. They're getting ready, whatever. And uh, the next line in the plot is Omar Gooding talking about in generic terms so that nobody knows what he's actually talking about. He's talking about the George Floyd murder. And he kind of goes off on this tangent about how black people are being killed and and whatever, whatever. Someone Um, asked uh, for some blues. And instead of being like, oh, thank you for calling him. He's like, yeah, you know what blues were originally called? Race records. Because America's racist. A black man was shot in his car. Like, like, it's like that kind of thing. So, so Tony comes in and cuts him off, calls him out for it. He's like, Hey, you've, you've got to play the music people want because people want to hear the music that they call into request. That makes sense. Like that, that's an understandable, (laughs) like that is a completely understandable and reasonable request. Imagine if you will, imagine if you will go into like a bakery and you say, Hey, can I get, can I get a birthday cake for my son? Birthday cakes suck. Have this <laughs> croissant. And they, yeah, no they birthday like, cakes at my shop. And instead of being like, instead of being like, oh yeah, here it is. They go, what's your favorite kind of cake? You say, I, I, I like chocolate. And they go, chocolate is wrong. You <laughs> are wrong. You should kill yourself. And then they just throw you out of their shop. And That's then what you start, does. and then you start crying. And the guy says, <laughs> hey, no crying in my shop. Get out. Right. Which is That's another thing. Rules. That's important. That's one of the rules right. that Taz sets out is no, it's important. Crying on my show. no crying on my show. So, yeah, so because a, a woman, a woman like called in and was crying about like her abusive boyfriend, and he's like, "Hey, <laughs> stop crying." Yeah, 
<laughs> and he was like, he was like, well, it sucks that you got abused, but what do you want me to do about it? And she goes, well, I'm just talking about you know these things that happen. She goes, well, stop crying. You're incorrect. <laughs> so no, so no crying on a show. He gets called out by his producer. He goes home and goes. To, his car doesn't start, so he walks home and goes mm -hmm. to bed. When he walks in his door, he slams the door of his house and uh, a plaque falls down from his wall. It does this three <laughs> more times throughout the rest of the movie. He picks up the plaque here and it says that he is like the top performing DJ of 2014. It's an award mm -hmm. he won for his time on on FM radio, on like real radio <laughs> in the right, context yeah. of this movie. So, so he, he picks up his plaque, he looks at it, he gets sad. He goes and he lays in his bed, fully clothed. It's not <laughs> the only time in the movie he does that um and he drinks and he drinks himself to sleep and he goes to sleep and he wakes up the next morning and he goes into work to do the same thing so it's setting this pattern like i am going to do this every day this is my life now it's horrible but when he gets there tony has a surprise for him tony is in a slightly more cuban looking outfit and a slightly <laughs> more um homosexual looking outfit <laughs> right um his shirts get slightly gayer as the movie progresses so he goes into work and Tony's like, hey, your little rant yesterday about equality lost us sponsors. Now we can't afford to pay for the music we play. That's not how radio works, but <laughs> we'll ignore that. Like, that's just straight up not how it works. But anyway, you 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 renew those licenses yearly. So anyway, um, so he goes in and he's like, hey, we can't play music anymore. This is a talk show now where you talk about music. Nobody talks about music for the rest of the movie. <laughs> so he starts talking to people. And as we've discussed, he starts yelling at people. <laughs> he and, starts insulting them for calling into his show. Right. Which at, at this point in the movie just seems like they're really setting up this very unlikable character. But we see later that that's just his arc. Um, yeah. yeah. He hates everybody and he hates everything. And it's it's just like from for the next few minutes of this movie, it's sort of a generic like uh, rotating guest of people who call in, and none yeah, well, of them. We get to we get we get to see his um the the reason either either the reason he hates pop music or the reason he hates love oh, wait, or wait, wait. both. We'll get yeah, there. Wait. We'll get there after the rotating list of voices. Right. Well, no, but I think I think this was this was the first this, night this he went home that, saw, he, like, that he he had like his. He yeah, had like but, a a, me a memory flashback of his ex, and then immediately turn on the TV well, and and see uh, I, I thought that was the next night he went home. No, I think it I think that was the there. first night because he he the, talked yeah, about yeah, Antoinette right, so that's, on the that's show. Yeah. On, Dan, on the Daniel, night, explain that. Off. I think I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So he he's drink he's drinking. He goes home. He has a flashback of being happy and in love. Turns on the TV. It's it's Antoinette. It's his his ex. It's it's it's, it's, it's this plot of Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Right. Essentially. Yeah. It basically <laughs> his ex is now a big pop star, and he uh, they and he is up, Michael so Sarah, he hates, and so he hates pop and he hates love. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. It's it's interesting because they never really establish if he hates pop music as a whole, or if he hates pop music because of her. They, right. they don't really touch on it. It's one of the, the it's basically one calls the other. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, but we don't she know which. She may, she I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, it's that, it's that. No, it, it really doesn't movie. matter, but we're, she we're breaking down the later, plot. So. Later in the movie, right. that, uh, <laughs> she, he, she stole his music. Yeah. So, yeah he well, he wrote he was, like her ghost writing for her. Mm -hmm. And producing, I would assume. Yeah. Cause he was a, he was a producer. Yeah, and so. he, he also said that he, he had like a lot of connections and he he got her like established as an artist yeah. right so there's this woman antoinette whatever that's the reason heidi he... is her real name uh, another yeah. another thing stolen from scott pilgrim the the fake name swap out to the the real generic sounding name that's that's the reason he is the way he is right like he's an alcoholic he's popping pills he's doing this mm -hmm. late night am show we really don't know how he got there uh, probably because of the pill popping and drinking well, um, yeah, I, I assume it was like you know, once they broke up, he kind of went on a downward spiral. And, yeah, and he was he was probably yeah. doing the same depressive like rants on there, and then they just fired him. Right, probably. <laughs> so, so he's doing this show, rotating guest to call, rotating list of phone callers call in. He insults all of them. He goes home. He goes to bed. Picture falls again. He gets drunk again. He mm -hmm. wakes up the next morning, and he goes into work. All right, and this is where the plot kind of picks up a little bit, because because this is it seems like we went through this quickly. This is like a half hour of the movie. 
Yeah. Mm. Which is just the and, setup of how depressing his life is. And it really does a pretty effective job for being this low budget indie movie of setting this up. Um and he gets into work and he starts taking calls and it's the same old annoying stuff. Some another racist guy calls in, I think. Oh and yeah, he, calls him boy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, he keeps calling him boy. And so he calls him out on being racist, whatever. And then he gets a special phone call. And it's from this mm-hmm. woman named Lucy. And so Lucy calls in and she's she's talking all sweet to him. She's like, I love your show. You really help people. I help people too in my job. I drive a tow truck. Yada, yada, yada. My name is Lucy. And he's like, so Lucy, what do you do for fun? What do you do for fun, Lucy? And she's like, well, I don't really do anything for fun. My boyfriend just beats me. And that's kind of the, the, the how things go <laughs> at this point. Um <laughs> So he hangs up on Lucy. The call ends. He goes to the next caller. And it, immediately after, like two minutes after, somebody says, <laughs> yo, that Lucy girl, she was so sweet. What do you think she's doing right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, really, like the most obvious fucking that up for a segue. <laughs> and uh, it cuts to her and she's towing some old dude's truck. And the old dude is like, like creepily flirting with her. He's like, <laughs> right. Lucy, you're thanks, so sweetie. You know, Lucy, you're Say, so pretty. Thanks, pretty lady. <laughs> Thank you, pretty lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but then she says, she says like, no worries, Mr. Anderson or whatever. Yeah, it, it, like, it, it seemed like a, it like wasn't, a it wasn't kind of old creepy. man flirting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't that creepy. Right. Um, so then Taz says, man, I hope she calls back tomorrow. And then he goes home and he goes to bed, but he doesn't drink this night. I don't know if you caught that. He goes to I bed. That, actually, he goes to bed sober I, the I, first uh, night that Lucy, Lucy calls. I, I you're, you're an alcoholic, that. which is why he picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. Do you think you could do a YouTube video where that's the thumbnail and a giant red circle? It's things you missed from AM radio. <laughs> things you missed from AM radio. Yeah. So he goes to bed, and then the cycle kind of continues. Uh, and this is this will be the second montage. There are two montages in the movie, and I don't remember what the first one was about. Uh, but the, the second first one, just like first one was just him. like him accepting calls. Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like the music was playing and everybody was annoyed during this one, both Tony and yeah, yeah. Taz. That, they that were was annoyed. the one where it was just it was uh was that the one where Claire de Lune was playing or was that No, no that's so that, Claire de Lune this... plays after the second time Lucy calls and, Lu- mm-hmm. and 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 he's like, Hey yo Lucy, why don't you look at the moon tonight? And then he plays uh, Claire yeah, de Lune yeah. because there's and he that. Looks at a, uh, he looks yeah. at a pepperoni slice that they've deceptive. <laughs> <Correct, laughs> yeah. It's the worst PNG of the moon it's I've so ever rough. seen. It's horrible. Um, but that establishes that there's a record player in the studio, which is important. And, and also, it's a record in, player that that doesn't work, according to Dalton. No, I no, because <laughs> that record player is owned by the radio station. It does not have a needle in it. The, the close-ups are stock footage that they found of a record spinning on a needle. The wide shot is the is the radio station's record player that does not have a needle in it, so it will play no <laughs> records. Uh, but yeah, so he puts in Claire de Lune because it's royalty-free and they can play music that they don't have to pay royalties on. And then that's when the, the montage starts. And it's them like dancing kind of happily. No, Claire de Lune is not in a montage. That's just in no, a separate no, yeah, that, that was Yeah, I, the montage yeah. was just some, like... It happens immediately no, no, it after was, it that. Was a, it was a cracked song. Uh, Josh, what was the name of that song again? Yeah, you're autistic. You'll know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know specifically Josh said that it was... It was a good song. No, I just I just said it was a good song. I like I, gotcha. I didn't know what the name was. Yeah. I just thought I was like listening right. to it thinking, hey, that's actually. Quite yeah, a, it was it was cool. Yeah, it was, it was nice. Showing, it was showing like a montage, both of them like just doing stuff, but then it would cut to like occasionally while they were doing stuff, they would like sing lyrics to the song, and it was, yeah, it was and fun then, and quirky. And, and then they'd show uh, Tony, and he was like having a seizure in the office. <laughs> You're right. No, yeah. we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. But at this point, we we paused the movie because it was it felt so long and boring up to this point. Forty minutes in, yeah, forty we're, minutes we're, in, halfway point. Yeah, we're at the halfway point of this movie. Movie's an hour and twenty seven minutes. We're about forty minutes in, so we pause it, go take a pee break, grab a snack, whatever. Right. Uh, and we're we're kind of gearing up at this moment because we we expect the rest of this movie to be as boring and lifeless as the first half. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get back, and it's not. 
So we yeah, get, back we get back and we play it. The best movie of all time. <laughs> right. So Lucy calls again, right? And and at this point, it's sort of feeling like like Lucy and Taz have been talking pretty much every night for about a month now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people yeah, are and they, they, they show that through tweets. Yeah, people yeah. are tweeting about AM radio. Pe- people are hey, super interested. I love tweeting. that. I love that the name of his radio <laughs> show is AM Radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the name. That's the name right. of his show. So people are tweeting yeah. about it. it th- this people are show specifically about hashtag Taz and Lucy. This mm-hmm. this show's doing numbers. Uh, <laughs> the uh, they've been talking for about a month, right? So it's been going on for a while. It's had time to build steam and popularity and all of those things. So uh, Taz and Lucy are talking. Uh, whoa, we, we skipped the scene where Lucy gets beaten. Um, yeah, so she, the, the night yeah, after the first the call, Lucy comes home from, from work and she's packed up all of her ex-boyfriend's things in the two smallest Amazon boxes <laughs> yeah, yeah. that you have ever seen. And she, and she kicks them. <laughs> she kicks them. Yes. She kicks them when she comes home and damages the boxes. And then she makes herself a cup of, of noodles, uh, eats it, falls asleep. Her boyfriend shows up. She answers the door. I don't, and she's I don't like, think she falls asleep. I think she fell asleep at the, at her work and then came home. She asleep. fell asleep at work and then came home and fell asleep again. I mm. noticed that because I was like, man, she's sleeping a lot. Oh, she be sleeping. <laughs> she'd, be, she'd be a bit sleepy. Girls be sleeping. But yeah, so she comes home. Um, <laughs> she makes herself a cup of noodles in the microwave. Remember that. She makes her cup of noodles in the right. microwave. She eats <laughs> yeah, them. She's not going to be doing that anymore. <laughs> she eats them. <laughs> she goes to sleep. Her boyfriend knocks on the door wakes her up she comes and she's like there's your stuff her ex-boyfriend there's your stuff and he Mm -hmm. says where's the rest of it where's my tv and my microwave and she goes i bought both of those things and i had to pawn the tv because i'm poor she's poor i'm poor i don't have any money he's like you pawned my tv go get it back bro and she's like, I can't. I, it's pawned. It's gone. It's pawned. I sold it. That's it what pawning means. Gone. Well, no. I do not have it. That, that's not what pawning means. But it, it, when you pawn something, you you temporarily sell it and then go get it back. That's how pawning works. Um, but anyway, and then yeah, if you whatever. don't if you don't get it within a certain number of days, then the pawn shop can sell it. But anyway, she's like, it's gone. So he says, well, I'm at least taking my microwave. So he grabs the microwave. Uh, she's like, no, don't take my microwave. How else will I make my cup of noodles? <laughs> and then right. he s- pimp slaps her to the floor. Um, she is now crying on the floor because she has been beaten. And he <laughs> takes the microwave. And then as he's trying to add insult to <laughs> yeah, injury, he's, he's, to he's, add, he says, get up and open the door for me. He's like, hey, open the door for me. And she's like, I'm, he, I'm, I'm on the like, floor. I, she, you, she, she's, she's like sobbing and like, like gasping for breath. And he's like, never mind. You're pathetic. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> he, he, fine, I guess I have to do everything about him myself. Right. And then I, as I think this, this is the point where I started wanting Taz to, to use – the well, gun okay. that was set no, up. We didn't yeah, talk, yeah. talk about the gun. Yeah. We'll get there. Earlier in the movie, during Taz's depressive cycle, there's a point where he he holds a revolver, a it toy may have, revolver. It may have it. also been that first night. It was the first night. It was the first okay. night. But he holds a toy revolver to his head. <laughs> right, a very <laughs> obvious toy revolver. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. at least it's at least shiny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a toy of all that they spray painted with metal, gun metal. I, I, I don't know that it's a toy, but it is definitely a cheap, cheap, cheap prop. Mm-hmm. Like, it's uh, like they bought it from a movie prop store, and it's the cheapest prop you've ever seen. And they, so he holds it up to his head, and he's going to shoot himself because he hates his life that much, but he, he decides against like, oh, it. I can't do it. And, and he looks he, at the, he the opens it, and, and it goes, goes through, and there's like one there. bullet in it. And this um, is after anyways, I he wanted said him something. to use that one bullet to shoot. It's, uh, it's after he said something on his show about Russian roulette. So that was kind of like the, the setup he, he payoff. Said show was I, didn't, Russian roulette. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Oh, was, no, no. I remember, I remember that. Yeah, he said accepting Russian roulette. Yeah, he, yeah cause like, like some people because you never know what you might get. Right, which was a setup for Lucy. Um, and as yeah. Lucy is sitting there on the floor, and her boyfriend says, "You're pathetic," walks out the door with the microwave in boxes. He drops the <laughs> microwave <laughs> and breaks it, and then kicks it just yeah. just like, just on, as an man. insult to her. Like nobody is a bigger jerk in the world than this guy. Yeah. Um, so so he leaves. Whatever she calls Taz again that night. And Taz is like, hey, Lucy, 
What's your favorite food? If you if you were rich, no, he's the since the radio show's blown up, he's got this nice charcuterie board, mm-hmm. and yeah, he's and talking about it. Oh, it's yeah, gluten free like food. food. Yeah, and yeah. she's like, "You're such a hipster," and he goes, "Well, if you had all the money in the world." He said, well, if you're a Republican. He said, he said <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Lucy's a Republican. Um, <laughs> this is also, I just want to say, this is also the point of the, of the movie where I was like, I thought I discovered the ending, which was going to be Taz shoots Lucy's ex-boyfriend with the one bullet he was going to shoot That's what with. I was really hoping for. M- my it's assumption, not so much that I thought that was going to happen. I just, I just really want to see that guy get shot. My assumption was that he was going to kill himself in the studio. And I got right. close, but not there. Yeah, you, you, know? you, were, you were also there, there for the making we're not, of the movie. But we're not there <laughs> right. yeah. I was there when they filmed the scene. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, so so um, so she's on the phone, and she's like, you're such a pretentious hipster. And he's like, well, Lucy, if you were rich, what would you eat right now? And she starts going on this long story about how when she was a kid, her dad took her to this nice Italian restaurant and ordered her this expensive plate of pasta. But she didn't give a – she did not care about the she pasta. Care about the she pasta. did not care at all because the rolls were top <laughs> freaking notch. She was eating Demas's. And you don't know what that means because you're not from Murfreesboro, but this movie was made in Murfreesboro. So that's definitely <laughs> what she was talking about. She was talking about the Demas's rolls. But anyway – <laughs> Every everybody in this movement movie, ev- Tony, <laughs> Taz, and the woman all have this sexual phone sex experience. Yeah, while Lucy it was so really <laughs> weird. Like, it was so they, okay, this okay. scene was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I because, loved it. <laughs> like like Taz, Lucy, and Tony, who's just in the side room, like not in, to himself. Yeah, all had it like a. a <laughs> phone guy no shawty, shawty was straight up like moaning on the i mean like i, I, think, almost, I think at one point omar, omar omar gooding was like like he, he was, was he was trying to make head. out with the mic yeah like he and was then, like and then when it mm. ends when it I ends you said he, he was like and then he showed me and, and don't but no yeah. one listening to this is well no one is it. listening to this so <laughs> really i'm just doing this for you guys and then and then after it ends omar gooding jr goes oh, oh. Uh, 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 sorry about uh. that and then he, he he says sorry about that i was thinking about them rolls <laughs> and i'm like whoa like and that's 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 not a joke that's legitimately what happens yeah, yeah. um but yeah so it's sort of establishing their relationship but omar gooding jr aka dj taz the maz he says aka galen but we're not there yet <laughs> yeah no we're not there yet he says he says, well, how would you like if we went and had some of those rolls? Mm. To which Tony busts down the door. I mean, breaks the glass door between these two rooms. I know it's glass because I worked there. Comes into the <laughs> Wait, room. Wait, did you, did you work at this station? Yeah, no, I, I worked at that before. Oh, you, I worked how, did that, how did that never come up while we were watching this movie? That's so weird. <laughs> so he, he breaks into the studio and he, he takes the mic away from Taz. And he says, all right, we're going to commercial break. And then he hits the commercial <laughs> button, which is nowhere near him. But anyway, he hits the commercial button and he, he gives Taz this whole spiel about the reason people like this is because of the mystery. Like the mystery is what's enticing people. People only like you and Lucy because there's there's secretism and mystery. And he even right, tells and Taz. He, and then he says, yeah, "What if he's he's, no, 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 uh, Daniel? You spoiled it." So he's he's yelling at Taz, and he's like, he's like, Taz, you only like her because of the mystery. You only like her because you don't know what she looks like. What if she's ugly? What if she's ugly? And then he says, what if she's what, bad? What if she's right, bad? Just, what if, what she's if she bald? has a scar and she has no teeth and she's bald? And what if she's four feet tall? And what if she only has what three toes? <laughs> like, like Man. all of this stuff. And he's like, you cannot date Lucy because she is might be ugly. <laughs> like all of these things. And and Taz is like, fine, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever. And so he answers the call and he's like, yeah, Lucy, those roles sounded great. I got to hang up on you now, though, because we got to go to another commercial break. And so he just hangs up on her, goes to break, whatever. She's like, yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. So uh, next night rolls around. It's more of the same. This one's a much shorter conversation. She's like, yeah, Taz, I like you because you keep it real. You're horribly depressed. You're just like me, for real, for real. He's me. He's literally right. me. <laughs> in all Same reason I enjoyed this movie. In, 
in all senses of the term, DJ Taz the Maz is me. He's 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 up there with uh, with Bateman. He's up there with <laughs> right. Robert Pattinson's Batman. <laughs> he's up there with any person Ryan Jackson Gosling Jordan. has played. <laughs> right. He's me. Hey, you know, Dan, Dan, do you know who works in that radio station over there? It's uh, me. No, 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 it's me. <laughs> it was me. It's always me, been Perry. me. But anyway, I, I, this whole I, thing, it's all about me. Yeah, so yeah, this so is also, she's like. This is also the part where it straight up rips off Scott Pilgrim. No, yeah, yeah the, we're, we're getting there, so so it's another night. Uh, a lot of this is just like nights. He goes up to the station. I guess this is a good time to need to talk about how well the station is shot. <laughs> the rest of the movie is shot fine. Like it looks like any kind of low budget movie. Point and shoot your camera. Use your autofocus. Whatever. But yeah. every scene that takes place in either the radio station or the mechanic's office where Lucy mm -hmm. works is so well shot. And they do, a, and the radio station is super bland, just to kind of set the tone. We painted the walls of the station for this movie, like they were dookie brown, but in this movie they're gray. But it's still super bland, like it's painted paneling. There's nothing on the walls. There's some blinky lights on the board, but the lighting is not great. Um, so they blacked out all of our windows and the whole studio, and they set up like LEDs. And so they change the light depending on the mood that Taz is in. If he's in a more angry mood, it's red. If he's in like a lovey dovey kind of mood, it's pink or purple. Uh, if it's very neutral, it's blue. Uh, but it's so good looking. It was they, green once. I don't know the significance. It was of that, green. It cool. Yeah, I think he was jealous or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they do that, and they also set up like the microphone angles, like the boom arms and stuff. Mm. To where it's out of focus and he's in focus. So there's stuff in the forefront in front of him. They do a lot yeah. of really cool stuff to make the radio station look great. I, I like I like when he's got the, the blue LED light on like the side of his face. Yeah. Like it, it, it looks great throughout the the whole movie. The stuff in the radio station was shot really well. I remember at one point there's a clock on the wall that they keep cutting to. It's the cheapest mm. digital clock you've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> they yeah. bought it for two dollars at Target. <laughs> Um, nah, they couldn't afford Target. They bought it for $2 at Family Dollar. Um, <laughs> right. But, but I remember like the, they put some work into that because they wanted to cut to the different hours. So they, they set up the clock and then literally recorded it for like 12 hours overnight just to get all of the different times so they could cut back I mean, and forth that, to it. That's relatively small. Yeah, I would yeah. say just change the time on the clock. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think I outside suggested thinking, that to him at one point. <laughs> I think this I said why, that. Don, this is why you didn't start an AM radio. <laughs> I right. I, I'm pretty sure I asked the director. He was like, yeah, we, we they set up the clock. And then I came back the next day and I was like, hey, why didn't you just change the clock for whatever time you needed? To be? <laughs> and I don't remember what his answer was. I think he was annoyed just with like, me. Like, Fuck, I should have thought of that. <laughs> he just looked at you in disdain and said, if you you didn't have to be here. I would <laughs> <laughs> that's why they cut my cameo. Uh, right. I was, I was... So yeah, that, that's why they, they pitched down your voice. Too. <laughs> I did the, the announcing for one of the, the spots coming back from commercial break, just by the way. Um, so, so all of that happens. Um, he goes home. He comes back. Right. The next night. It, the, the, like I said, this movie is very much like he comes into work, gets a phone call from Lucy, it's goes very, home. It's very routine. It, yeah. yeah it's right. Very, yeah. Well, it's because the whole movie takes place in one spot and they broke it up really mm -hmm. well, actually, like I, well, doing yeah, it at different say, times. Like, yeah. for, for a movie that basically takes place in a radio station, an apartment and a mechanic shop. Yeah. Like I never got bored. Well, Not in the second ever. half. Yeah. I, the, in the second no, half, I was, I was pretty no. bored for the first half of this for movie. For the first half, yeah. And then once, one thing I invested in. This it, this movie is a little heavy on the setup, but the payoff is great. So yeah. so he gets back and he gets a phone call from Tatiana. No, that's the woman from She Hulk. What's her name? That's my sister's name. Uh, uh, Antoinette. Antoinette, aka Antoinette. Heidi. Right, Antoinette. She calls him. This is his ex girlfriend. Him. So mm -hmm. she calls him because she's upset. She's jealous of him and this new girl. Um, and the success he's having too. Like it's a little bit of both. Right. And she just starts insulting him on the air and he's like, Hey, you're a failure whatever. And so he goes off on this girl and he's like, I hate yeah, these he, people he, who call he in. I hate these people who call in. I hate you. I hate pop music. <laughs> I, I wrote all of your songs. I'm the only reason you're famous. You're the worst. And I hate you. <laughs> 
hey, your songs whack. Your look, <laughs> whack. <laughs> your shoes, whack. <laughs> your shoes, whack. I'm fresh as you have a relationship with your mother, <laughs> whack. <laughs> and and so as he's saying all of these things, when he says the part about I hate all the people who call in, Lucy is listening and she gets her mm-hmm. feelings hurt and she gets upset. She, so she calls, he calls them all. Yeah, and well, he things. specifically also says. I don't remember what the the thing she said to, to get it out of him. But she was like, "I don't I don't care about Lucy. I don't need. I'm yeah, Taz the Maz. He says, right. "I don't need Lucy. I'm Taz the Maz. <laughs> right. right? He's the Tasmanian devil. I'm Taz the Maz. I don't need anybody to make myself successful. Which has kind of been his arc throughout this whole movie. He's super egotistical. He thinks he can do it all. Um, and she's kind of breaking him down to get him to a very vulnerable spot, which is why he's so popular when talking to her because he's himself." Yeah. Um. And so all of that happens. Lucy gets upset. She turns her radio off. Whatever. And Taz goes home that night, and he gets sloppy. He yeah. drinks a whole half gallon of apple juice. Apple juice. <laughs> I saw them funneling into the liquor bottle. <laughs> um. It's liquor in like a in like the cheapest bottom shelf liquor bottle you've ever seen, and they put apple juice in it because they didn't want to pour out like a full bottle of something good. So they did it with they did it with with Kentucky taverns or whatever it is. But anyway, so so you say or whatever it is like that's not what you drink. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 all of that happens. He is drunk, drunk, and he's hopped off on mm-hmm. pills, and he's he turns like, yeah, he's on like his throwing TV, up on his floor. Yeah, he's a whole throwing shebang. up. He's turning on his TV, and on the TV is the music video of his ex-girlfriend <laughs> and a Western starring a girl named Lucy. <laughs> like, it's like right? And he only gets two channels. He gets both of those channels, and that's it. And he's slipping back and forth, whatever. He keeps getting drunk. He, he throws up on his toilet. He tries to go to sleep in jeans and his belt <laughs> and his chain. Yeah, and um, his hoodie. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Get it together. Like, like no like, wonder you off. can't sleep, dude. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sleep either. Um, so so the whole day and night goes by, and he doesn't go to sleep. And the next morning, he's still drunk. He's talking to himself. He's got his revolver out. He's threatening to shoot himself, but he won't. And he gets a call from Tony, who's like, Hey, old dude, you better get up to the radio station. <laughs> that yeah, accent I, I, was... la- I laugh but that is literally what he sounds like yeah, that's I was up. about to say that accent was spot on <laughs> yeah. your answer, you better get up to the radio <laughs> yeah, station yeah, it, 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 uh, say, you should get up to the station <laughs> so he gets up to the station and this is where the movie like clicks a knob and it's brilliant mm-hmm. because he calls out Tony and he's like he's like hey I'm drunk so cut the crap ASA <laughs> and then Tony's like <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Yeah, he like just, <laughs> he just drops the speaks accent. Normally. It's it was gone. so good. Like, it's I gone. genuinely got so like, we excited. Were, and, 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 watching it and we were going like, why is this guy doing an accent? And they never address it other than him saying, you're white. I'm Dubin. <laughs> we, just, like, we just assumed that the accent was because the actor, well, I, I know this. This is true. That that whole part there at the end was added in because this actor insisted on doing the accent for the movie. <laughs> he wa- like it was he How wanted bad to do it. I am that he did. And yeah. and and he drops it and he's just like it like it was fake throughout the context of the movie. He was faking this <laughs> accent to one dude at two in the morning. <laughs> like like not just like that his was friend. insane. <laughs> he's like um, but this actor, I don't, Josh, do you have his name pulled up? Uh, I, I looked it up earlier. It is, it's something like Tony something. Like it's, it, <laughs> it's cause he, cause he couldn't respond to any other name. <laughs> so, so, so like he insisted. Oh, wait, no, I've, I've, got, I've got his name here. Got he name insisted here. on doing the accent because he Eddie wanted Rubin. to. Tr- Eddie Rubin. <laughs> He's bro <laughs> name after a sandwich. But anyway, um, so so dude, he insisted on doing the accent because he really wanted to, probably to like test it out to see if he could. And the director was like, I don't know that we need to to do that. I think you mm-hmm. can just do the thing. Cause the the director, me and him had several conversations as everybody was packing up, whatever. Uh he eventually gave up and just like let the guy do the accent. He was like, just do your accent. I don't care. And so I guess this part was written in because of that, where he just drops the accent, which isn't that like, I don't know that anybody else would notice it, but the accent was so bad throughout the movie that the fact that it was fake in the context of the movie makes it brilliant. Yeah, um, it, it, it goes full circle from being like, 
a dumb thing to do to to cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> You're right. So Taz Taz has still got his he's still got his his little little six shooter on him, the toy gun. He's still got his gun from <laughs> Toys R Us. He locks Tony out of the studio. Um, he so he locks him out. There's a great there's a few great reaction shots where Tony like pulls back the curtain and he lo just looks shocked. I'm pretty sure they use the same yeah. one. Uh, Tony is in a shirt that looks gayer than the shirt he was wearing in the last scene, right? Uh, which is the the trend. And so. Tony tells Taz before this, he says, you can't go on the air. And Taz says, I'm going to go on the air. And Tony's like, fine. Taz <laughs> locks him out of the studio. Bro folded. <laughs> he, 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 he <laughs> that one. <laughs> um, Taz turns on the mic and he starts talking like super depressive. He even cries a little bit, which mm -hmm. is a rule. You don't cry that, on his show. Yeah, that, was, that was a good, good payoff to the yeah, no crying. That was a setup. nice little pay. The, the payoffs <laughs> in this movie are good, like yeah. genuinely good. So, so he's like, hey. Uh, I'm really depressed. I'm sad. I'm also not as cool as I thought I was, and that makes me sad. I am not as good of a man as I assumed that I was prior. Whatever, whatever. He seems like he says basically. I'm I'm gonna uh, ad lib a little bit, a little bit here. He says <laughs> he says I am going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I will kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. There's a gun in my hand. I am going to kill myself. That's basically what I Taz is saying. Life. Are you ad libbing? I'm pretty sure that's what he said. <laughs> right. So uh, Tony calls the cops. Um, Taz keeps talking on the air. Uh, somebody calls in, and he says, no, no, "Lucy." He, he specifically he, he specifically talks about how he fumbled the bag with Lucy, right? And how he, he should have met up with her. He apologizes to Lucy, and he says, "Lucy, call in right now. You're the only person who can save me. Please mm -hmm. call into this radio station." The phone rings. He answers. It's a counselor. He spins the mic around. He's now standing up. He sits his, in, in the the greatest cinematic shot I may have ever seen in my yeah, life. Like genuinely. He sits the fakest looking revolver you've mm -hmm. ever seen down on a record player that does not work. <laughs> <laughs> on a record player with no needle. And it just spins. The revolver is revolving in it circles. Looks so it looks cool. so cool. It looks with so cool. With the LED good. lights on this chrome mm -hmm. revolver. Yeah, like and, it is it is beautiful. And he's like, Yeah, hey, you're buying time. You're just buying time for me. You're just trying to get me not to kill myself because I'm going to kill myself. Right. And the and, reason and, Dalton's saying this like he's rapping is because he looks like he's rapping when yeah, he's saying right, it. Right. Uh, and, and, and so Omar Gooding Jr. has been good throughout the whole movie. He's been the <laughs> best part Gooding of the Jr. movie. And the cinematographer did not deserve this movie. Like, like, yeah, I don't. There was not a cinematographer on this movie. <laughs> right, yeah. So, the, so the guy who was behind the camera every now and again <laughs> did not deserve this movie. O Omar Gooding Jr. has been the best part of the movie for the whole thing. He's been fine. He's been good. He's been miles better than anyone else. But in this last scene, this whole closing dialogue, if you if you watch anything from this movie, and I I don't know that I would necessarily recommend it. Maybe the second half, but you kind of need the first half for setup just go and watch this like closing monologue by dj taz the maz because omar gooding jr kills it and it's so good yeah, and he's like talking he, about that, like that was genuinely like what i would consider to be an oscar worthy performance and <laughs> like, it shouldn't have been like it had no right being so freaky, maybe but. our standards were just low by the it, people it, sitting in the truck that also very possible yeah, yeah, because, oh, yeah that, that was the scene like right before it. Well, well while this scene is going on it cuts to it cuts to uh, some people getting their truck fixed at lucy's mechanics people, office random people that they found in the streets of murfreesboro yeah the, like, two guys there, like we have to write the scene. One of them's a girl. Do we have any actors? No, yeah, one come on, come on, Josh. Yeah, and they're like, "Hey, it's DJ Taz the man. He's losing <laughs> he's really his mind. losing it, and he's and... asking for some girl called Lucy." <laughs> well, no, uh, Lucy says. Oh, he's talking about like, that oh. girl Antoinette, and the one girl goes, "No, it's some girl named Lucy." Don't don't you know what it sounded like? Her name tag. It sounded like the name tag on her shirt that says Lucy. It sounds uh, like a bit of Twin Peaks. It sounds like people from my hometown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you probably you probably knew them. They probably heard your show. It does kind of right. feel like something from Twin Peaks, but less Twin because Twin Peaks didn't have that many Southern accents. Just because Twin Peaks takes place in the North. No, I just mean people be doing bad acting. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but so, in Twin Peaks, but it yeah. was on purpose. So it cuts back, and maybe it's because our standards were lower. But it was just such a great like monologue. 
And he's like, you're buying time for me. I hate cold pizza. Cold pizza. Pizza's <laughs> supposed to be warm. And cold pizza's the devil. Well, come on. Cold, cold pizza's good. No, no cold. cold pizza slander ever. Right. Yeah, so all this stuff happens. The cops knock on the door, and they're like, yo, open up. It's us, the police. <laughs> and he's like, they found me. They're going to get they me. me. I ain't going yeah, to jail. No shit, they found you. <laughs> yeah, like, like you yeah, they're not taking me alive. <laughs> you, you weren't hiding from the police. You were on the radio going, I'm going to kill myself. Right. Right. So he keeps saying he's going to kill himself, whatever. The door opens. How? I don't know. It was locked. <laughs> the door opens. In walks Lucy. She says, hey, do you want to go get some rolls? And Taz, he fumbles a little bit and he says, yeah, I would love to get some rolls. Roll <laughs> credits. That is the ending of our movie. I get it. Roll. <laughs> Roll credits. I, I may or may I not be I, I may or may not be in the credits. I don't know. But... <laughs> yeah. We're we're gonna say that you weren't. Yeah. I'm not a, <laughs> yeah, I'm like not on the IMDB. I tried to add myself as a producer <laughs> and they said, No, we cannot verify this information. <laughs> So I can verify it. I was there. <laughs> I was there. I produced this movie. But yeah, it, <laughs> it's really interesting because like we said, the beginning of this movie is not great. But the second half of this movie almost makes up for it. it I, I'd say it does. I'd say that the second half of this movie makes the, the slow – burn of the the first half worth it and, for me and, and we say like slow burn it felt much longer than it was it was only mm -hmm. like 40 minutes of all yeah. set up i think had we watched this whole thing as a whole instead of pausing it in the middle we wouldn't even really think about it like that we would just think yeah. about this movie as one good movie mm -hmm. but genuinely like i i because i i was there while they filmed it but i didn't expect this going in I expect it to be much worse looking, number one, much worse acted. Omar Gooding Jr. saved this thing and just much yeah. worse story wise than it was. It but was it, it was more character focused than I thought it would be. I think the fact that he was literally me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really helped it out. But like I, I don't know, like the character the character study of Taz, Lucy was kind of like she was she was very much a side she character. Was, she yeah, was there. She was, she was she not to say her character was bad, but it was just kind of lacking. generic. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't really lacking. It was one note, like it was just yeah, she, girl like she who was abused, abused girl. but she is still strong, and she she was like, a plot device to this, get Taz yeah. out of his spiral. Correct. Right. Yeah. And, and, but Omar Gooding Jr. does such a good job in the, I, I like. Yeah. It's almost yeah, like. That, it, it reminds me a lot of Joker. This movie is as good as Joker. <laughs> it reminds me. Yeah. Of, <laughs> it reminds me a lot of Joker. Whereas Joaquin Phoenix m carried that movie entirely. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix made that movie something that it wouldn't have been without him. And right, I feel yeah. the same way about AM Radio. Omar Gooding Jr. makes this movie something way better and way more than it is on its own. And I know he did not get paid enough to do that. Yeah, no, not nearly <laughs> enough. And no, so, no so what I'm saying right now is go if you're if you're listening in America, it's streaming on uh, Peacock, I think Crackle as well, and then yeah. there was one other streaming service I can't remember. Go and watch AM Radio just simply so Omar Gooding gets the royalties. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. like Even if you don't actually watch it, just just play it and like walk away. Or yes. do, do, do some laundry, wash yeah, your dishes, like, like, whatever. When, Open when you your work, laptop play and mute it. Leave. Open yeah. your laptop and mute it mm, and yeah, watch do, something else whatever. on your TV. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then when it gets to the end, set a timer for about an hour and a half mm -hmm. and then watch the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, Because, like, he is so good at this and doesn't deserve to be. The movie looks good. When it's in the studio, it looks fantastic. When it's in the studio, there's a lot of like close up shots where it's got a nice depth of feel to it. it looks, yeah. It's got it's that beautiful. cinematic look. It's it beautiful. Is, yeah, it is genuinely beautiful, the shots in the studio. And so, even even a lot of the shots of like him him walking down the street and and Lucy like in the, the mechanic shop. Mm. Like and even we those cannot, are all are all we pretty cannot understate we cannot understate how good 
uh, Omar Gooding, isn't it? Right. And how yeah, good the one so shot good. is when they put the gun on and the I appreciate, I appreciate just... you finally getting his name right. Because <laughs> right. he's not a junior. <laughs> <laughs> Omar Gooding Jr. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah, that and the record <laughs> spinning gun one. That, that one is so, so good. good. Like if, I I mean I would I would genuinely recommend it. I know we're not to rec, oh yeah, but I would genuinely recommend. Yeah, to, to um, everyone watching so all, do, all, all one. <laughs> do you guys do you guys remember when I I made my Space Ghost Coast to Coast live action concept art? Yeah, uh, very vaguely. Yeah. Yeah. So I edited that piece just to kind of tie this into our personal like Photoshop, whatever. I made that piece while I was sitting at the radio station board while they were filming this movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just to like give some content like like it, it sounds like a joke, whatever. The only reason we watched this is because I was. I, I was part of this movie. Like I was I, I was involved in the making of this movie to a very low extent, but it happened. Um, but it turned out to be a genuinely good movie. <laughs> like I, I really this was supposed to be us, me and Josh messing with Daniel. Because we right. were supposed to watch BVS, but what I we watched instead, watch what you know, we watched am, instead was a movie way better than BVS. Let me just say, I am so freaking glad that you guys decided to try and mess with me. <laughs> because th- like, not only was this like half the length of BVS, which already makes it much more enjoyable, <laughs> this was so much better in quality than like, BVS. So like, so much better than BVS. Miles. And I'm not I'm not saying that in the way, you know, like uh, last week or week before I said that the Tomb Troom video was better than BVS. I mean, this was genuine. Like this was a I had a more I would consider this a real movie. I would not consider BVS a real movie. Yeah. Well, it, we went into it thinking it was going to be some low budget non movie because those mm-hmm. exist. And, and I yeah. like those like I do find those enjoyable because they're I hilarious. Absolutely. Those like those movies that are trying to be movies, but they're really not. Like, it's more just Mm. sad to watch. But this was a movie, and a good one at that. It makes me regret not going to the premiere of this that I was invited to. (laughs) (laughs) Because I didn't want to see this movie. (laughs) But, like, it's good. And I'm in it. I'm in a good movie. (laughs) (laughs) Me and Don were looking at movies last night to be like, oh, what can we play instead of BVS to mess with Daniel? (laughs) And then I think... (laughs) I, I can't remember how we got into it, but you're like, oh, do you remember AM Radio? The the one with uh, Cuba Gooden Jr.'s brother? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, that, that, was, it, that was a weird movie. And went, do you want to watch that? And I said no. And I'm so glad that we did. And I proved myself wrong. Uh, yeah. Though you can say I was wrong. It's fine. Josh was wrong. Uh, <laughs> I love hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I thought, no. I thought I'd give you both. This movie has changed me as a person. <laughs> Real. Bro got changed from AM radio. <laughs> AM radio no, changed me as a person. I mean, if if you can find it to stream, I don't know what the streaming looked like in other countries. I would I would literally search up mm. AM radio movie. You if you search AM radio, it won't come up because nobody else yeah. has seen this movie. I would search up AM radio movie and then just see where it's streaming. And I would really I we're at recommendations. Personally, mm. I would genuinely recommend you watch this movie because it's yeah. actually pretty good. Yeah, like it it is it's worth the the slow first half because the second half is genuinely great it's not i just text my dad who also works at the radio station and i said mm-hmm. oh it's streaming on peacock and he said i watched it awful <laughs> <laughs> uh, <based>. oh. <laughs> um but no i like i, I think if it's not some big budget action comic book movie too. Like it's no Garfield two, a tale of two kitties. Sure, yeah, it's no, it's no Daddy's Home too. Right, like, like it's, <laughs> it's not that. It is genuinely a smaller scale slice of life, like lower, lower time picture. But if mm-hmm. that's more your thing, if you like these character study type movies, I really do think you're gonna get some enjoyment out of this. And I hope we're not hyping it up too much. Like I hope we don't hype this we, movie we up. Are. I feel like we definitely are. I yeah. Think, <laughs> like a big part I of why the we only like this reason movie. we like this is because we thought it was gonna be horrible. Like, we we yeah. went into this thinking it was gonna be just the, the kind of garbage movies that you see on Amazon Prime, where it's like you know that the poster has nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. But right. like I would still say watch this movie. I just say keep your expectations a bit low. Like, 
Like, like, don't don't go in thinking you're gonna watch the the Irishman or something. Yeah, you're and watching... if, you, if you're not you're gonna, uh, Irishman was kind of mid. But if you're if you're I, not gonna watch mid, this this, this movie, movie, this movie is as good as the Irishman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's Josh, what I'm at, basically. Josh, what's what's that new movie that you keep telling us about, Gontrov? Oh, Gontrov. Oh, Gontrov. Yeah, this, yeah, this movie yeah. is 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 as good as Gontrov. I would say sure. this movie is as good as Gontrov. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I. Set your expectations low. Go in, watch AM radio because we want to support Omar Gooding Jr. Right, um, because he's so goddamn good in this movie. Like I, I cannot stress. I know we are kind of overhyping this, but I don't think we're selling enough how good he was in this. Right. Like and uh, he, uh, everything that we right. everything we say, take away that Omar Gooding Jr. deserves Better. Everything good in the world. Yeah. He deserves better than AM. He deserves, deserves so much better, better than, than this movie. movie. This is his he Joker. Better than, uh, he should have taken Cooper. Best Actor. Yeah, he should have. I um, would have watched Omar Gooding in Snow Dogs <laughs> over Cuba. Any, any, yeah, final, any final thoughts here? Um, If you are going to ignore our recommendations to watch this movie, which is completely understandable, I would <sighs> beg of you to at least watch the final scene of this movie because it is... Like one of the best pieces of cinema I, I've ever I, seen. I would say search it up on YouTube, but it's definitely not it's on YouTube. Not on YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> so just find the movie. But yeah, yeah, yeah good call. Like, Josh, like, like final says, thoughts? Like Don says, the movie is streaming on Peacock. You don't have to pay anything to watch it. Yeah, it's no. free. It is yeah. free as is, as is Crackle. I think Crackle is another one of those free. Yeah, and, and yeah. Crackle. And Fubo? I, Fubo TV, which is Yo, a $70 Fubo, Fubo, streaming service? Fubo TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fubo? Uh, but yeah, watch this movie for sure. Dave Chappelle skit. All right, but but yeah, this movie's great. Omar, Good, uh, Omar Gooding is great. That's all I can say about this movie. That without going into, I love Omar movies, Gooding. Right. I, I did Omar not know Omar, Omar Gooding, Gooding existed before <laughs> a couple hours ago, but I love this man with all my heart. Now. Omar Gooding and Taz the Mez are literally me. Correct. All right. uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the very next episode of Semi Pro. Are not watching. <laughs> Thank you.